So, like the other post-Dominion War videos I've made, this video uses a lot of memory beta content to flush out the history of the Mirror Universe, or the Terran Universe as it was known to the Federation. It makes substantial appearances in Star Trek Online, especially during the Cardassian struggle arc, and features as a recurring enemy. Thing is, by the time we re-encounter it in 2409, the Terran Empire has reformed and is making headway in reassuming control of the Quadrants. On the surface, this is rather surprising, as last we saw of it, the Empire was long since fallen, and only a handful of resistance cells were fighting against the Alliance, the new ruling power. The history of the Terran Empire is not explored that much in Star Trek Online, and many of the missions where it featured were removed from the game's narrative. This means that the contents of this video are equal parts speculation, in-game information, and sourced from books, novels, etc. But I'll try to cover what happened to the Mirror Universe after we last had contact with it in Deep Space Nine. While at the same time, I'll be taking my ship the USS Dunkirk to repel a Terran invasion of Bajoran space. This five-player battle sees us and our allies protecting Deep Space Nine from waves of Terran ships as they cross over through interdimensional tears. DS9 to all Alliance ships. We are under attack by Mirror Universe forces. We request immediate assistance. Our defences are nearly down! We need help to clear these ships! Back in 2293, Emperor Spock of the Mirror Universe succeeded in reforming the Terran Empire into a republic based on peace and diplomacy rather than hostile conquest. However, powers rose almost immediately to dethrone the former empire. After the Terran Republic's collapse, Many of the former Empire's races, especially humans, were now being treated as the slave caste of the Alliance. Despite the noble sounding name, the Alliance was just as brutish as the Empire had been. It was formed out of many of the oppressed races who had been unified by the anger they felt for the Terrans, and tempered under their heel. Missions such as this often descend into controlled chaos very quickly, but the objectives remain simple. We are to keep Deep Space Nine at operational health while repelling the invaders. More objectives are added as the battle continues. Skipping ahead now, Terran rebellions started in earnest in 2372 with the theft and construction of a Mirror Universe version of the Defiant. Turak Nor, or Mirror Deep Space Nine, was captured by the Rebels and became a base of operations for pushing back against the Cardassian Klingon Alliance. We were taken by complete surprise. They knocked out our long range sensors and most of our defenses in the initial strike. We now have repair crews get our defenses back to full fighting strength. Our sensors are coming back online and we're getting unusual readings. These could be where the Mirror Universe ships are originating from. Check out those areas. Close what was I saying about new objectives? Anyway, in 2375, Grand Nagus Zek of the Ferengi Alliance wished to establish trade with the Mirror Universe. Many in Starfleet who have had dealings with the Mirror Universe could easily point out how risky this was, but it marks an important precedent for the other races showing an interest in the universe, despite the Federation's policing of access. Around this time, it's unclear when, but must be post-2372, and I suspect a while after the Ferengi's attempts to pioneer into its realms, Vedic Eith quits the Vedic Assembly to mount their own expedition into the Mirror Universe to study the Mirror Bajor's interpretation of the Prophets. Their visits remain unresolved, but establishes the existence of Mirror versions of the Orbs of the Prophets, suggesting a separate pantheon of wormhole aliens. In 2377, Intendant Kira was killed by Ileana Gemore, who, in a Mirror Universe twist, had been surgically altered to resemble Kira Nerys. If the name sounds familiar, that is because the Prime version of Ileana Gamor was the Obsidian Order operative and Cardassian daughter of Tekini Gamor, who Major Kira Nerys was forced to impersonate. She was unstable from torture and had a plan to find the Mirror Celestial Temple so she could be labelled as the Emissary and gain a cult following. 
they're breaking off. We have them on the... Wait! We're getting massive energy readings. Something huge is crossing into our universe. Stand ready! Surrender! To the Terran Empire! Ah, that would be the entire Terraknor station. Now we need to beam assault teams to the invaders station to force them to retreat. Let's uh, wrap this up and get back to the history. In 2378, a new alliance of planets known as the Galactic Commonwealth began to unify the disparate rebel cells into a fledgling political movement, and in 2379, the revolution against the alliance ended with the Terran Rebellion signing an armistice with the Cardassian Klingon Alliance. It made valiant strides over the years to mirror the United Federation of Planets example for stability, and for a time, this worked out. This year, Regent Wharf of the Klingon Empire was offered freedom by the Terran Rebellion as part of the treaty, but instead chose to end his own life rather than face the dishonour of returning as a prisoner who sat in a cell for the majority of the conflict. In 2381, Michael Eddington was the chairman of the Commonwealth, and by this time it encompassed 20 light years and 12 member planets. Things were looking promising. This is where records fall dark, however. In 2409, the Cardassian True Way movement, a video on them can be found in the links, under the control of the new founders was searching for allies to support its anti-federation campaigns. They eventually found the Orb of Possibilities, a mirror universe Bajoran orb that enabled them to enter into the mirror universe, and when Gul Kardec crossed over, he discovered that the Terran Empire had returned in full and was now pressing the Alliance to the brink of destruction, perpetuating this cycle of conquest. Gul Kardec was in the midst of forming a firm alliance with the Terran Empire in 2409, when we encountered him during the Cardassian struggle story arc. It may seem strange to turn to the Mirror Universe for help, but I think it's a mix of opportunity and desperation. Looking at the enemies of the Federation, who's left for the true way to turn to? The Romulans had been fractured by the Hobus supernova, the Klingons were engaged in a war with the Federation, but were on the opposite side of Federation space and never exactly fans of the Cardassians to begin with. Locally, they have the Talarian Republic, but they were being left behind in terms of technological development, and the True Way had few resources to share. As for the re-emergence of the Terran Empire, if I had to guess, I'd say that the totalitarianism that was prevalent in the powers of the Mirror Universe made their way gradually into the Commonwealth in a gradual slip. A policy here, a preemptive strike there. It's a reoccurring trait of the Mirror Universe that even the best of intentions gets twisted. DS9 showed that Spock's Republic was a noble idea that left itself open to the less than noble intentions of the numerous angry enemies that the Empire had made. It's likely that the new Empire was forged from the same resentment that formed the Alliance. Hate begets hate, after all. It's interesting to see how Bajor has survived all of this. It's not doing that great, never has, but its loyalties have flipped from a subject of the initial Empire to a Republic state to an Alliance protectorate, then part of the Commonwealth which eventually became the Terran Empire again. One of the more prominent individuals of the Empire is Captain Leta. Back in 2375 we saw her as a member of the Terran Rebellion, where she remained, marrying Mira Esri Tegan. She refused repeated offers to return to Bajor from her father. He was a prominent political figure and disliked her involvement in the Rebellion, worrying it could hurt his reputation. So naturally, she instead became an officer in the Terran Republic's army. As the Republic was a member of the Commonwealth, it lends further support to the idea that the Empire crept up from within the Coalition, rather than a rival faction that's overthrew it. Our reinforcements will put you in your place! When we meet her in 2409, she's reached the rank of Captain in the Imperial Star Fleet, commands the ISS Fortuna, and is in charge of military operations in the Bajor Sector. So, eventually, she did return to Bajor, arguably in a more powerful position than her father, so I imagine there was no small amount of satisfaction to be had there. Personally, 
I dislike that the Terrans fell back into the cycle of conflict, but at the same time I get why from a story perspective. You haven't seen the last of me! Terok Nor has been sent back to the Mirror Universe. We wouldn't have been able to repel them without your help. Thank you. Join us for a celebration in Quarks. The Terrans really could go either way, peace or war, but you've got this darker universe that is basically an excuse for twisted what-if scenarios. So if, ultimately, it ends up becoming a mirror to the Federation, this peaceful commonwealth, sure it shows some nice development, but it wraps up the story. There's not really much point in revisiting the mirror universe if you can't have fun with this darker, evil twin idea. That's my opinion anyway, and I hope you enjoyed this lore dive into a potential future of the Terran universe. After all, long live the Empire.